Hi, in this tutorial I will show you how to play MIDI files using SoundFont MIDI Player in Windows. As you probably guessed by the name, SoundFont MIDI Player produces its sound using a general MIDI instrument collection in SoundFont format. For this tutorial, we will be using the new 2.0 version of my General User GS SoundFont. As far as SoundFont capable MIDI players go, I find SoundFont MIDI Player to have the best combination of user interface and playback quality available on Windows. For me, FluidSynth is still the best for sound quality, but it is close. I have linked to my FluidSynth video in the video description if you're interested in checking that out. Now, on to the tutorial. You will need to download two things to start. SoundFont MIDI Player and a general MIDI compatible sound font to render the instrument sounds in your MIDI files. Let's grab the sound font first. Open a browser and go to www.schristiancollins.com slash general user. Scroll down to download and click the link under current to download the latest version of general user GS. Note that this will be version 2.0.0 or higher by the time you're watching this video. Next, let's download SoundFont MIDI player. Go to falcosoft.hu Under Windows Software, select SoundFont MIDI Player and click the link to download the 64-bit version without SoundFont. Now go to your Downloads folder and extract both of the archives you downloaded. I right-click, go Extract All I untick the box that says Show Extracted Files When Complete, and click Extract. Do the same for General User GS. And then you can delete both zip files. Note if you don't see the .zip extension, it's because Windows hides file name extensions by default. Anyway, you can tell which files are the zip files by the icon having a little zipper. So I will select both of these and right click and delete. Now I recommend putting both of these extracted folders into a more permanent location. For example, I like to put my sound fonts in a dedicated samples folder. I will right click on the general user GS folder, go cut, and then to get to my music folder, I'm going to go to my C drive, users, and then select your username here. And you can see the music folder here. And I like to add it to quick access so I have easy access to it by just dragging it, whoops, dragging it there. Now easy access to that at all times. And then inside of this folder, I'm going to create, I'm gonna right click to create a new folder and we'll call that samples. Go inside of samples and right click and paste that general user GS folder. Looking inside of that folder, you can see the general user GS sound font here. Again, you might not see the .sf2. And there are also some demo MIDI files and documentation, etc. here. We'll come back to these MIDIs in a bit. For now, go back to the downloads folder and we have this MIDI player. Now, this application does not have an installer like you normally get with Windows applications. You'll have to, I'm gonna go inside here, see if there's a nested folder in there. So I can run this just by double clicking the MIDI player. It'll ask for permissions to open it since it's an unknown publisher. I'm just gonna untick this, always ask before opening this file, hit run. And there's the MIDI player. Uh, but before I do anything with this, I'm actually going to um, move this into a better location. So I'm going to put this inside uh, Program Files, right click, uh, and I'm I'm copying this MIDI Player 6 folder, not the um, not this one. So I go inside here. There's MIDI Player 6. Right click, go Cut, and uh, on my C drive, I'm going to go into Program Files, right click and Paste. I need administrative permissions to do that, so click continue. All right, and now it's in with all of my other programs. 
I'm going to go inside the MIDI player six folder here, and I'm going to right click on this MIDI player.exe and I'm going to select create shortcut. And this shortcut can be put anywhere. It can be put in your start menu uh, or your desktop. I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now. And I'm also going to rename it to get rid of all this shortcut.exe and all this stuff. So just MIDI player is good. Get over there. All right. Now I can run sound font MIDI player just by double clicking this shortcut. I'm going to hide this for. Yeah. Now it's possible, depending on when you're watching this video, that you might need to download one more thing. Click this menu button here, top left of the window, and select About. What you want is for this base MIDI version to be at least 2.4.14.33. You can see here it's .16, so this is too old. General user GS will not sound fully correct with a base MIDI version this old, but this is something you can update separately. Now, in the future, let's say MIDI player 6.5 or newer might come with a sufficiently new base MIDI version. Close MIDI player. And then to get a newer base MIDI version, let's go to www.unforeseen.com with a number four in it, slash base.html. Scroll down until you see base MIDI. Here it is. And look at this version. And this, unfortunately, is still too old. This is the current release version. So we'll have to use a beta version to get a version new enough. Not to worry, I have a site for that as well. Let's go modify this URL, add slash forum, slash question mark, topic equals 19224.0. And I will have these links in the video description so you don't have to type all this if this is too much. Hit enter. And this is the forum thread where Ian posts beta versions of his software. So under Windows, you can see here is base MIDI. Click on that. Go back to the downloads folder. And uh, we can get rid of this MIDI player folder here since we already moved its contents out. All right, here's base MIDI, extract that. Just like we did with the other ones. Delete the zip. And then go inside the base MIDI folder and go inside X64, since we're dealing with 64 bit here. Right click the base MIDI.dll, copy, and then go into program files or wherever it is that you moved your copy of the MIDI player. MIDI player six. And we're going to replace this base MIDI.dll with the one you just copied. So right click, paste, replace. Okay, you can close out of that. And we're done with the browser for now. Go into MIDI player, menu, about, and you can see now we are running version 2.4.14.37 of base MIDI, which is sufficiently new. Go ahead and close the about window. Now let's get this configured for MIDI playback. Go to this gear icon, and tick the box for use base. This is how we will use sound fonts to play our MIDI files. Under default sound font, click file and browse to where you placed general user GS. Uh, you can see here it is already opening in the right location. Here's music samples, my general user GS folder. And then here is the sound font. So if I click that, you can see the details for that sound font and click open. For improved sound quality, I also like to enable use sync interpolation. And you can optionally increase the polyphony, which is how many notes can play at the same time. I usually like to go with 512. That's more than enough. Now, I tend to find bass MIDI's effects levels a little bit heavy, especially the chorus. So I like to reduce both levels a little bit from the default of 64. In the case of reverb, I set it down to about 59. And chorus, I set even further down to 43. This, of course, is up to preference, but this is where I find the best balance with everything. Click OK. Now, there's a lot going on in this player window. I'm not going to explain everything. 
but at the bottom is a playlist. One other change I like to make is to right click in the playlist window and untake this repeat all playlist option. If you're just listening to a single MIDI file or a few, it's usually not desirable to have it start playing again right away. So now you are ready to start playing MIDI files. Go back to that uh, general user GS folder and there's some demo MIDI files in here. Here they are. There's also an audio folder. This will give you an idea of what these are supposed to sound like. Um, these demo MIDI files are played using Fluid Synth, but they should sound pretty similar played through bass MIDI. Let's uh, try one out. We'll do some Christmas music. Okay, it's in the playlist, hit play. And it is working. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's gonna find out if you've been naughty. Really creepy when you think about it. All right, anyway, that's it. Um, yeah, uh, enjoy some middies and thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.